Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to a totally new video for my channel. So today I'm making this video as a journal for me to see how I'm feeling along this process, but also for any of you who are going through the same thing or maybe feeling the same thing that I was feeling before or during any of this process. I just feel like it's important to share because while I'm researching this, I'm finding that there was no one really my age going through this or posting about it at least. So I figured this is what I do. I just share my life with the world, right? In hopes to help someone. So guess we're going into personal life too. <laughs> Basically, I've thought that the ways that I've been feeling are normal and I'm finding out that they're not. The fatigue, energy levels, lack of focus and motivation and things, extremely low non-existent libido, which I thought was super normal. Really not for a 28 year old woman. And basically I decided to do something about it. I went to the doctor and they did a hormone panel and found out <laughs> that I have extremely low, pretty much non-existent testosterone levels. Everything else was good, hormonal, vitamins, everything besides this. So I don't know how they measure things exactly, but an average woman has 100 whatever, and I had 23. 20% of the average woman testosterone levels. So low testosterone can cause a bunch of symptoms. The ones listed are feeling sluggish, muscle weakness, fatigue, sleep disturbances, reduced libido, weight gain, fertility issues, irregular menstrual cycles, which I wouldn't know. I'm on the pill. So me and my doctor decided to do hormone replacement therapy. It's a testosterone pellet thing. It actually goes in under your, it's in your glute, by your glute. It actually goes in like above, like right here. Maybe I'll show you guys like the next time I get it done. So I go in, I talk to this doctor and they type my levels of everything into this computer and then it spits out how much dosage of the testosterone should be in those little pellets. From there, they put two or three, whatever of those pellets inside that little above the glute fatty area. And it's supposed to time release for three to five months. Um, I didn't know pretty much anything about this and I just jumped in, which is not like me at all. <laughs> oh, and when they put my information in the system to see how much testosterone should be in those pellets, the system thought I was a 65 year old woman going through menopause. I'm 28. I'm gonna be 29 soon. Really testosterone levels should not be decreasing until you hit 30. Like the mid twenties are supposed to be like your peak. And I'll tell you right now, I never had a peak. <laughs> as far as the actual procedure goes, let me look it up to give you the deets. Okay, bioidentical hormone pellet therapy. The subcutaneous pellet acts as a reservoir of hormone, allowing the body to receive a consistent dose throughout the day and night. The pellets gradually absorb until they are completely dissolved, leaving no residue. Typically, a woman finds that the pellet will control symptoms for three to five months. And I actually thought it was pretty interesting because if you know me and my personality, I would almost think that I have high testosterone. I'm a pretty dominant person. Uh, so I think it's crazy that it's actually the opposite. Yeah, it says diminishing levels of the hormone is a normal result of menopause and aging. Don't think it should be at 28. <laughs> so it's been pretty weird, but it seemed necessary and it seemed like something to where I'm like so afraid of needles. I don't even have my ears pierced. And so finding out that they were going to like inject something in me was like, no, no, nope. Uh, but I know I need to do it. So I'm just gonna not think about it, say yes and go for it. Like fully trusting you guys. Uh, that's what I did and here I am. <laughs> so that was the procedure. And now I'm going through the process of these hormones releasing in my body and I'm not quite understanding them. That's basically what this video is for. So let me break it down so far. It's been this is the third week, I believe. I got it done March 29th. I didn't really feel anything but anxiety the first week, but again, I think that was primarily just due to the fact that I jumped into this thing without even researching it or anything. And I almost passed out after it was done because of the epinephrine, I guess. They said it was normal, but really the procedure was fine. Second week was just a very kind of numb, 
kind of low sadness levels wasn't very talkative at all my boyfriend would come home and i would just hey what's up uh not very talkative no high emotions a little bit of low emotions but nothing too drastic second week very low emotions <laughs> cried over everything um just sad feeling down about myself uh instagram god i've okay i've never really cared about instagram and social media too much and i legit started to get really down about myself and i've never tied who i am as a person to a social media platform i've never cared and i was just comparing myself to anyone and everyone uh thinking just very negatively about myself which is abnormal i mean i don't necessarily think like super high of myself but i don't think poorly of myself i don't really compare myself to others and now i'm finding that it is really hard not to so that's been a struggle and then i've also just been very emotional like everything is heightened times 20. so something that would normally be like a kind of sad thought for like a minute and then to move on no i am like sticking to that sad thought and not letting go <laughs> anger short fuse for sure um i saw something the other day that would normally make me like Ugh. and no i was so livid I wanted to, I wanted to punch things. I wanted to throw things. I wanted to break things. Testosterone, I'm assuming it's a hell of a drug. <laughs> but I think it's just that I'm not used to feeling as much of these emotions. And I think that's also just my body adapting. I don't think this is how it's going to be for the full three to five months. I think my body is just trying to figure out what the heck is going on. So the second week, I actually was the second or third week? What day is it? Let me look at my calendar. I had done this night, that was my spring break. Went back to fifth, yeah, so last week was huh, really emotional. But on the ninth, I had an extremely like up day. The ninth, which was the Friday, I was, if you saw my Instagram, I was just on the moon. My normal kind of just bouncing around, wanted to dance, want to go out, want to talk to people. And I had a blast. It was a beautiful day. And then the weekend was, was chill, pretty good. And then went back into Monday and just kind of dipped a little bit. Um, if you follow me on Instagram again, you saw that on Monday, I was supposed to have these people in my classroom, which normally I always feel like, ugh, like I really don't want to do this, it makes me super anxious, but I carry on and I go with it. I got the email they were going to be in my class that day and I cried, I, ju I just lost it. In class, I had to call the office to have someone watch my class so I can actually like leave and freaking break down because I'm not gonna deal with my kids are in class, but they obviously know something's wrong because my eyes are all watery, I'm just trying to hold it back. So yeah, went to the bathroom, cried my eyes out for a bit, came back because I had to, but then try not to cry. Lunch, just cried the entire time. And then I pretty much just told the lady, yeah, I'm not, I'm not doing this today. And luckily it's distance learning, so I just, it's as simple as not letting them in Zoom. <laughs> um, don't know if that was the best decision, but I, I couldn't. If I broke down just from the email, I would have broken down with her in my classroom. So not doing that for me or my kids. They don't need to see that. And today I had a meeting with the same people, district wide though, cried during the meeting, had to turn off my camera and then I've been kind of tired and just blah ever since then, like can't quite get past it. So I feel like that's kind of the main things right now is my emotions, whatever emotions I'm feeling, I'm really feeling. And it doesn't pass as quickly, which I guess is why I was always really good at just blowing things off, not taking things too seriously, just very lighthearted. And now I actually feel things deeply um my according to my boyfriend he said that he notices some changes uh nothing personality like drastic or anything but he did notice that i'm less passive so we have super deep conversations for like hours but if he like gets really focused on something and normally i'm just like i'm gonna let him do his thing finish his thought process and now i'm just like nope i got something to say and i'm like 
interrupt. <laughs> I'm not that big of an interrupter, but now apparently if I got something to say, I'm gonna say it. <laughs> so yes, I guess less passive, which does make sense, just things in general. I am extremely annoyed by people majority of the time. And I think it's kind of because this, normally I would be very passive, blow things off. And now I'm just like getting frustrated really easy. I've noticed a little change in libido, just the fact that there is one, <laughs> but as quickly as that comes, it very quickly goes. Like you got like a five minute window and then that door is closed again. So I don't know, this is a process. It's only been, this is the third week, like I said, but this does last for three to five months. So that's kind of my big thing of if I can have this procedure done, it, it at least lasts a long time rather than injections or orally or anything like that. Um, I'm hoping though, say I do these pellets like once or twice, then my levels will be normal to where then the injections will be an easy maintainable thing. But apparently women do this regularly. Uh, the doctor that actually did the procedure, she has it done. Um, but she was like 50 something. And all the women that I look up on YouTube and stuff, they're all 50, 60 something. I have yet to see a 28 year old going through this or explaining this. So here I am. <laughs> oh, another thing that I want to point out. So I know that birth control is affecting my low testosterone, that that's just kind of known, but it shouldn't be this low. Like the specialist that I went to said, this should not be affecting it to this extent. Um, I don't want to get off birth control though, because I'm not at a point in my life where that is what me and my boyfriend are wanting to do right now. I was actually really frustrated because when I talked to my gynecologist, he wanted to switch me then to an IUD, not doing, and then a lower estrogen birth control. So it has very, the smallest amount of estrogen possible. But to me, I was really frustrated because why wasn't that what I was given before? Why are women given birth control with high estrogen and progesterone and all this stuff when we could be taking a birth control that has fewer hormones that mess with our bodies and does the same thing. Why, why are we not informed about this? Why do we not know about these things? And I already had this appointment to get this thing done and it was my original plan. So I stuck with that. Um, I mean, I guess I'll see how this goes. And if for some reason I don't like it or I don't really notice anything, then I can go and try and switch birth controls or switch methods or whatever. But yeah, this has been the first three weeks. Going great. <laughs> um, I will try to keep you posted. Maybe I'll just do like an every three weeks thing with Jing. Bam, yeah, if you like this video, found it helpful to understanding me and what's going on or helpful to you in your life, please give this video a like or comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.